Hi, today I'm going to be talking about ultrasound assessment of the median nerve. I'm going to show you how to easily identify this nerve and quickly and easily assess it throughout its length. I will also touch briefly on the assessment of its branches as we go, but what we'll do is we'll start with the proximal median nerve and point out these four potential entrapment points. Uh, now to assess a nerve, I like to pick it up at a spot I can easily identify it and then just follow it in short axis, proximal and distal. This is what Martinoli calls the elevator or lift technique. So at the proximal median nerve, for the proximal median nerve, I like to pick it up at the level of the elbow joint. So we'll bring up our scanning picture and here we are at the level of the elbow joint. And if we look for the biceps tendon, we'll find our median nerve just medial to it, running with our brachial artery. And then we can just easily follow that proximally under our biceps and we'll follow that up far enough so we can check for any supracondylar process or intact struthers ligament, which may pull that in towards the bone. And then we'll follow it back down under our biceps and we'll assess where our biceps aponeurosis comes across the top, looking for any entrapment there. As we continue down, we come under the humeral head of our pronator and it will run between the humeral and ulnar heads um, quite often the ulnar head is absent uh, or very small. In this case, it's absent. We don't have a ulnar head running under this nerve. But as we come out from under the pronators, we then come under the flexor digi superficialis and our fibrous arch of our flexor digi superficialis. So here's our pronator muscle, flexor digi superficialis here, and this little leading edge here which can be a potential entrapment point where that fibrous band comes down. So you can easily assess that in longitude and also back to transverse as we continue down uh, the arm a bit further. Another potential uh, cause of entrapment is uh, this little guy which is a little accessory muscle, our uh, ganser muscle or our accessory head of flexor pollicus longus and this is us wiggling the patient's thumb as we come down is our FPL muscle, flex pollicus longus, coming back up. You can see it come off that muscle and wiggling away with it. So that's our ganser muscle. That's easy to identify with a little wiggle of the thumb. Uh, this guy can also be a cause of entrapment of our anterior interosseous nerve, which is a little motor branch of our median nerve, which comes off the posterior or radio posterior margin of our median nerve. And it this just arises just at the distal end of the pronators um, and what we'll see is we'll see it running out between our flexor pollicus longus and flexor digi profundus muscle bellies. It runs out between those two muscle bellies along the border of the radius to our anterior interosseous membrane. So let's see if we can pick this little nerve up. If we don't see it coming straight off the median nerve I quite can usually find it quite easily along the radial border or coming onto this anterior interosseous membrane where it runs with the anterior interosseous artery there. There's our little nerve across the radius in between FPL and FDB over to the median nerve. So back around, back down, it supplies FPL, FDP, and as we come further down we'll also see pronator quadratus coming across here which it also supplies. So any issues with this nerve we may see some innovation changes in these muscles. Um, this can sometimes just be a neuritis rather a compression syndrome so just paying particular attention to these muscles looking for any innovation signs is also very important. There it is coming through there. So that's our proximal median nerve and its branch. We'll continue down to the carpal tunnel. Uh, easiest spot to pick up the median nerve of the carpal tunnel I find is just at the proximal margin, just, just proximal to the carpal tunnel where it runs under the brachial fascia. So we'll, we'll look at that and we'll also look at these little branches here which are our uh, palmocutaneous branch and our recurrent motor branch and we'll have a chat about those as well. So let's start with our nerve just proximal to the carpal tunnel under the brachial fascia there. Here's our nerve and we'll follow that proximally where we'll see it run 
between these two muscle bellies are flexor dig superficialis and our flexor dig profundus. This little nerve is running with a recurrent median artery. Now we can easily identify that and we can check if it's patent by putting our color on, which it is. So what we do when assessing in the carpal tunnel is we like to assess uh, both at the proximal end and run all the way through and make sure we assess fully and get through to that distal end which may have some form of compression and swelling of the nerve and we want to compare maximum area the proximal end or the distal carpal tunnel to that of the median nerve at the distal forearm and I'll provide a link to an article which will give you a little guide on that so we'll move on um, this is our transverse carpal ligament running across the top of the carpal tunnel and our median nerve there. So one of the branches to talk about sits just in here and this is our palmar cutaneous branch and it sits just to the ulnar aspect of the flex carpi radialis. We can see it running in its own little tunnel which it has there. Now this has a few variations. It can actually run deep to the brachial fascia and transverse carpal ligament and then pierce through and this can be a potential spot for entrapment but most often we'll see it just happily running just superficial it will run up and branch away as it comes over the thinner eminence that's one of our little branches there which is easy to identify and assess and very important to note if that's above or below and piercing through as we come down, we'll talk about a recurrent motor branch. So as we're coming through the carpal tunnel to pick up a recurrent motor branch, I like to get right to that distal end of the carpal tunnel, which we're about to get to. And as soon as I get to the distal end, I immediately change directions and run proximal again. And what we'll find is we'll find that little branch running up. Oh, there it is over there, running up and over our thema eminence muscles. So coming back down, just at that distal carpal tunnel and you can see it just flick up so I run distal proximal and it's easy to identify and that little branch will supply all the pheno eminence muscles apart from the deep head of a flexor pollicis brevis um, which is supplied by the ulnar nerve thanks for listening uh, we're really looking forward to running some more events later this year and beyond, um, just check us out on the socials or at mskaustralia.com.au to check for future events.